When I hear that less and less 17 year olds want to pass their driving test or own a car, it gives me a sad face. And that's why I decided to set up a brand new playlist to champion the people that do, do want to own older cars, do want to tinker with them, modify them and enjoy the passion of driving. So this is the first episode of that brand new playlist. This is Generation Flex, but I'm not going to present it. I'm going to get this man to present it. His name's Miles Reynolds Cole. He is AKA The Mandalorian. Welcome to The Late Break Show. So for the first episode of Generation Flex, we've got in touch with an 18 year old called Ben. He lives in the New Forest and he daily drives a very quirky Volvo 480. He also has a very interesting family heirloom which seems to have started his interest. Uh, so we're at your grandmother's house outside the garage and you say the Quattro's in here? Well, yes, yeah. The, the Quattro has, has always lived here from the day my grandfather brought it home from in 1986 when, when he retired and treated himself to something quite nice. In my life, one of the most significant uh, events happened just over there when I first heard the car start up um, as a two-year-old and saw it emerge from its lair. So I, I assume that's the first time then that you saw this car. That was the farthest back that I can remember knowing the car and it was one of my earliest memories of all, um, which is somewhat um, somewhat telling that I've become a car enthusiast off the back of that. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's that's very similar to uh, what happened with me when, when I first saw Back to the Future about yeah. Um, yeah. Same thing happened with the DeLorean, I'd assume. Um, sounds very similar. So uh, should we take a look at it? Oh, yes, let, let's 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 unveil it. Now that is awesome. So this one was actually involved in a crash, but if we go right back to the start, I'd quite like to know why your granddad bought the car. My grandfather was an engineer. When he came up to retire in the mid 1980s, he, his retirement plan came out very favorable. And so he decided he wanted a new car because the Rover SD1 V8 he had was dangerous. When my grandfather drove this car, this very car, at Tesford Motors in Southampton, he f absolutely fell in love with just the, the power, the sheer amount of power on tap and the grip. And being an engineer, he also w was drawn to the four wheel drive and probably even the five cylinder engine as well. So he was so impressed with it that he bought the car on the spot. He bought this car? Yeah, this very car you see now. And, and continued running it right up until his death in 1998. Oh, that's not an original plate, is it? That is indeed um, a different plate because what happened with this car was in the early 1990s, my grandfather had trouble with circulation in his life and he unfortunately suffered a stroke at the wheel um, of the car when he was just driving home from Southampton. Um, he clipped a car on the inside, turned the car 90 degrees and and floored it into a, car, a second-hand car dealership, writing off about five cars and somewhat famously amongst the family, pinning a salesman behind his desk. But unfortunately, because the car was a complete write-off, my grandfather was very disheartened by this. But this was thankfully the time where you could buy a car off the insurance company and have it rebuilt if you wanted so. So we did exactly that. However, if you see the front plate is with the, is with the 1990 font, and the rear plate, if you go around here, it's got the older style. Has got the older 1935 font. I have been tempted to get re reproduction plates made. However, I feel that this is an integral part of the car's history and shows that yes, it did get written off, but it's also a survivor. So, looking down the side of the car, it looks remarkably straight. They must have done a, quite a good repair job on it. Yeah, yeah, that that. It was it was all done to to factory standard and by by a really good body shop. Indeed, the body shop who did this car, its successor did the Volvo when I had that restored. Oh, so oh. there was a nice sort of family link there. Yeah. Um. I think I think the founder of the the, the body shop 
was re was one of the people who originally worked on this car. Uh, I'm aware that the car isn't really running right at the moment. Does that mean you've never been in it? So, so yeah, the car has only been non running, not running correctly for the past six months or so, and the, I, I only passed my test um, last October in the Volvo, and I do not really want to drive this yet. Should we take a look at the engine then? Okay, yeah, let's go ahead. So you say it only stopped running right about six months ago. We've checked the turbo hose because that has gone before, but that seems to be connected properly. Um, and everything else seems to be in order. So our only guess is the the, the fuel injection system. Yeah. Um, that that's the only I, thing we can check. I did bring some tools with me because uh, I knew it wasn't working and I thought we could take a look at it. Uh, I, I looked online and I heard that it had KE Jetronic, which is, uh, after a small amount of research, I worked out it's very similar to the DeLorean's fuel injection system. Oh, really? So okay. hopefully, uh, if you're okay with it, we could have a look at it. If you can fix it, you go ahead. I, I am willing to... I'm very keen to see how you do this, because we don't know. I'm more than happy to have a look at it for you. What I'm thinking of doing first is, because um, it sounds like, from what you're saying, you've replaced most of the ignition yeah, system. Yeah. I'm thinking it's possibly, or most likely going to be something to do with the KE Jetronic which is a fairly complex mechanical fuel injection system. So, uh, anyway, I think we should uh, listen to how the car is running at the moment and then yeah. you, know, you, can, it, you can tell a lot just from how, how the car sounds. So uh, yeah. if you could fire it up. The Quattro. Fire up the Quattro. <laughs> you don't get a chance to say that very often. Yeah, so um, I think we should go through ignition again because yeah. this was obviously not making a huge difference. I reckon it's had new leads and plugs. We can check that again, but yeah. we could take this off, put a plug in there. Uh, I've got some brand new ones from the MX-5 uh, unopened, so we can just so you're going to see if it fires. Shove one in, just see yeah. how well it's sparking on that one. Yeah. Uh, if it's not, then we can take the cap off and have a look. Yeah. Or try a different lead. So I fitted a brand new NGK spark plug. Uh, which is for the MX-5, just put it on here just to test it. Uh, so if we could uh, fire it up yep. and we can see whether it's sparking properly. So what we're looking for is a strong uniform spark and it does actually have quite a uniform spark. It's sparking pretty much every um, every revolution but it it's very weak and there's the only the occasional strong one which you might see in a second it's only been doing a, a small amount i've only seen two or three there we go there's another one uh, yeah I, ow <laughs> got me <laughs> i do i do that quite a lot <laughs> yeah i hate it i went through my foot that time <laughs> <laughs> right oh uh, yeah i think we should look at the underneath the cap and stuff. It's weird seeing a five-cylinder distributor cap. It just looks wrong. I think I found the problem with this. It's, I think it's just the distributor cap. The uh, connections in the, inside the cap are really pitted and they look like they're possibly overheated. Um, must have been quite a bad connection or something when, when it goes past. It's, or it could have just worn out. This might be the original cap. I, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, in the meantime, I want to check out the interior, so let's go and have a look at that. Okay, hey, so uh, you told me this thing had a digital dash. It so does indeed. Have a look. That is really cool. <laughs> it, although the noise of the car really got me intrigued, it was the dash that really cemented the car in my mind, because this was something that was so advanced yeah. that it, it just blew my mind, quite literally. It's just so 80s it's green and it, I, I've got to say that's more probably more 80s than the DeLorean it, yeah nothing describes the 80s better than yeah. that 
of, of course, the car's biggest party trick, apart from the four-wheel drive, is the fact that it talks to you. Does it? Well, quite literally. Attention. <laughs> Brake system defective. Please fasten seat belt. It's got a very 80s synthesizer sound. Yeah, Attention. or the, it was a real Please person who recorded all this. They, they must have done the letters individually. Please check brake pads. That's really cool. Please refill washer fluid. Does it just keep going on? <laughs> Until every level. single thing has been cycled through. Okay. Yeah, I don't usually like digital dashboards because it's more of a modern car thing, but this is just... Yeah, I I hate digital dashboards in modern cars because this always set the benchmark for me. Yeah. Because this is a dashboard that gives you information about what the car's doing, not what your iTunes are doing. I suppose once you've seen something that <laughs> cool, you don't get... No, nothing compares to something yeah. that's that cool. And it's green. <laughs> Which is just awesome. When you're driving at night with just with just that illuminating you, it's just like wow. It, it's giving me night rider vibes from it. It just reminds me of like Kit from Night Rider. Oh yeah. Especially with the voice as well. So we've just had a look at the Quattro, which was a really cool car, by the way. So this is your Volvo 480 ES. Yes. Yep. Yes. So is it your first car? Well. Not exactly. It is the first car that I drove properly on the road and the first car, well, that I, it's the car that I learned to drive in and passed my test in. Okay, so if, if you don't mind me asking, because this is quite an important part of Generation Flex, because young drivers, yeah. what's the insurance like on this? So the insurance like this, um, firstly, what you're going to know is classic insurers will probably not take you if you don't have another car to fall back on. Yeah. So I had to go through mainstream insurers to get this insured. I ended up, uh, rather ironically, going with an insurance provider called Go Girl, who were able to quote me around 1,600 quid. Uh Funnily enough, I'm using Go Girl with the DeLorean. Yeah, it just, it looks almost like a, like a Volvo V70 front end but flipped upside down and used as the bumper. Yeah, I, I do, I see exactly what you mean. And uh, of course, pop-up pop headlights, pop headlights, which, oh, they're cool. <laughs> These uh, electric ones, right? Yes. So, yeah. so what, what's it like as a daily driver? As a daily driver, it's absolutely fine. It's It's got a really nice, although the, these cars aren't um, the most powerful cars out there, it's a, roughly equivalent to an eight valve Golf GTI in terms of engine power. Performance, yeah. What these cars really, sh where these cars really shine is in the bends. They're, they're fa the, Lotus, the, the rear suspension was set up by Lotus and there's really, you can really tell that in both the B road sweep and just maneuvering it around town. That's, that's it, really interesting to know. The, yeah. Yeah, because Lotus is obviously renowned yeah, for Lotus. handling. And if I'm right, in thinking this was the first front wheel drive Volvo? It was indeed. So what made you buy this car? I wanted to find something classic and interesting that could be used every day, was stylish and had decent performance for the modern road. As you daily drive this, what's it like for reliability, is it? Reliability has been fairly mixed. So the engine is absolutely bulletproof. But the electronics are the are the real weak point with these cars. I have had times where the Volvo has been out of action because the either the alternator's broken or it's that there's been a trouble with the handbrake. But the the Volvo, as we speak, is has been very reliable. Yeah, uh, it's it's quite a, a quirky classic and. Well, I don't know what the price is. You, how much? So I picked, I specifically wanted to go for an early car like this one with the uncatalyzed engine. Okay. These cars yeah. are generally a bit cheaper. Because, however, this car I picked up for 650 quid, but that was as a non-runner. Um, 650 with, quid's pretty good still. Yeah, like, especially considering... given that once we had plugged in a new sensor, it started first time. So you mentioned the Lotus handling on the rear. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to see what it's like to drive on the road. So. Yeah. It's, I think that calls for a test drive. Yeah. It's got quite a yeah, uh, nice exhaust note. It sounds, it sounds almost, it reminds me of an MGB. It's got that rorty sort of burble. Yeah, but it's, it's not, it's not droney at all. It's quite a nice, yeah, it, it's, pleasant yeah. background noise. It, 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 it's, it's perky. Yeah. 
you can't see down the bonnet either because it's, no. it's so no. high at the start and angles down but so much. When you put the headlights up, you've you can, got two points of reference. You can just about see. Yeah. It does creak and squeak and make strange rattling noises. You but if just, it's not doing that, then it's not a 480. Yeah, you can just put that down to yeah. it being an old car though. Cause it didn't it necessarily wrap you up. It leaks a uh, lot. Is it around the door seals or the windscreen? All the seals, all the door them. design, and all sorts of things. It, it all leaks and it comes through the scuttle, comes through everywhere. Once I finally had my heart set on one of these, that's when the search really began. I love, I love these, these gauges in the centre. Yeah, they're, really they're nice. They're nice. The Volvo blanking plug is where the turbo boost gauge should be. On the 1.7 yeah. turbo, yeah? Yeah. Still got the original cassette player in it. That's not the original one, that's one I had to find separately because. Sticking got, to cassettes though. You, well, you've, got, you've got to. What's the point in buying an 80s car if you're not going to listen to cassettes in it? That's exactly. That, that is exactly what I did. <laughs> yeah, you can see my collection down there. And yeah, they there. fit perfectly. I was, I was yeah. thinking about you that. You could just... get a cassette holder, but they. Um, is that not? That's <laughs> not a cassette holder. They actually, that actually holds more cassettes than the cassette holder. Well, that, that is absolutely perfect for them. Eight cassettes. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, I like a car with toys, and this car comes with enough toys to keep you interesting, but also it's normal enough to be used every day. Yeah, so the throttle is actually surprisingly reactive to... Left here. Yeah, yeah, it, it's... It's a peppy throttle, it, 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 it definitely goes. Yeah, it's like you barely put any pressure yeah. on the throttle at all and it suddenly revs. Yeah. Come on, you can you put it in third and give us a welly, go on. <laughs> there we are, that's more like it. It does pull quite well. Now it can There we go. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll do 70 quite happily. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean by a rev range as well, it'll be about. Or 3,300 RPM at 70, roughly. Yeah. So yeah, you've got this enormous speedometer right in the center with the rev counter off to the left. And this rather interesting semi-digital dashboard on the right-hand side with yeah. all your warning lights, which appear to be right in their own segments with illumination yeah. behind. And completely digital fuel gauge. You wouldn't want that to go wrong. The steering wheel's quite an odd shape as well. You know what I mean with the uh, two-spoke steering yeah, wheel? It's yeah, very, I know what you mean. And, and very you see the, the notches that are that are carved into the wheel hub. Yeah, they've um, like given it a load of grooves just to make yeah. it. But well, those are actually carrying over from the from the alloy wheel design. Yeah, I was I was thinking and that. That's a deliberate decision. It well, it, it definitely works because yeah. you made the link so. And it's got these nice little notches yeah. uh, for yeah. your thumbs so to sit. So you know exactly where to put the right position of the hand. Very tight round. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a bit. Yeah, give it a bit of a blast. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. And the, the, these curves like here, this is what it's good for. Yeah, I can actually Strangely enough, I can feel that the back feels very planted. Yeah. And yeah. I, I reckon that's possibly down to Lotus doing just yeah, the rear, because the rear feels like yeah. it really wants to stick to the road. Yeah. And yeah, the front actually, the steering is quite direct. It does throw yeah. it around. Yeah, it's very comfortable. And the, the front suspension, although it feels a bit soft, yeah. and I, I suppose that's why it, it's a bit uh, almost it's, I don't want to say slow because the steering is quite direct. However, it, it feels almost a bit lungy. The, the DeLorean is quite similar in that respect, although it, it's lungy on the rear. This is almost flipped completely because it's, it feels firm and solid on the back. Thank you very much for letting me drive that. Pleasure. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Maybe we've got another. Oh, it's got a seatbelt warning light as well. Oh well, yeah, obviously it's a Volvo. Yes the people who invented the three-point safety harness. Thank you so much for featuring these awesome 80s cars in this video, Ben. Absolute pleasure, Mars. It's been great having you here, and I'm really glad that you got the opportunity to, to test out 
this car and meet your first Quattro. Uh, if you've enjoyed watching this first episode of Generation Flex and maybe you'd like to feature your cars in a future episode of Generation Flex and you're between the age of 17 and 25, there's a link in the description below where you can contact us. Uh, we'd love to see what you've got and thank you very much for watching. <laughs>